You might have seen this guitar before. It's my Squire Stratocaster Bullet and what I did was I relicked it. Now in the video where I showed you how to relic this guitar I didn't actually really show you the process of going through the entire body and where to relic it and what to do. So But I have this guitar and if you've been subscribed for a long time you saw me build this guitar but after playing this guitar for a year it's actually started to relic itself a little bit and so I thought it would be a perfect candidate to show a little bit of the technique that goes into relicking a guitar. Okay so here is a closer look at the body. Right here we have some wear and I actually think this is from there being something wrong with the spray paint I did. It was not perfect and sometimes you get something trapped underneath and then it can cause issues later down the line. I also have a little bit of wear right here and that was actually from when I buffed the guitar and I sort of heated this area up a little bit too much and I got in a weird angle and it sort of peeled it off and then I colored it in with some brown paint to match everything up and it's just been worn off afterwards why because i've been playing and my arm has been there and it's been getting it getting it all off the only actual wear from playing has been up here where my arm has been sanding away pretty much down to the wood it's not completely down to the wood yet there is still the grain filler so if you were to touch this it would be very smooth and you wouldn't feel anything weird now an important thing to say before we start this relicking is that both guitars, the Stratocaster I just showed you, which is Squire, and this guitar, they both have a poly finish. But the Squire I did not spray paint, it came from a factory, and it had a really thick layer of poly that I had to sand back almost like 90% of the lacquer or 70%. It's, you know, hard to know when it's so many years later. But this guitar, I did everything I could to get down to as thin of a layer of poly as I could. So it's not really the same thing. If you think that you can buy maybe some sort of poly guitar and wear it down by just playing it, it's not really the way it works. You have to remove the clear coat that is on it because it's just so thick. But this guitar doesn't have a very thick clear coat. It does have a clear coat, but it's no, almost like a tenth of what a guitar you buy has the kind of a clear coat. So before starting this whole process, you need to take the entire guitar apart and you need to sand back the clear coat on the body a lot. And if you have a pickguard or something like that, you could start sanding there to make sure you don't sand too far because obviously you can sand too far. We don't want to remove entirety of the clear coat, we want to remove only yeah, somewhere around 75%, maybe 80% of it. So just know that to begin with. This guitar has a lot thinner coating than a store-bought guitar. But hopefully this process will still be a lot of fun and educational for you to watch. So here is the guitar and I'm just gonna with a white marker, because it's pretty dark, so with a black marker it might be hard to see. Try to figure out where I want a little bit of, of relicking. And I've said this before in other videos, so if you've seen any of my other videos, you, um, you already know this. But I like to mark out with a pen, but I don't draw in the pattern that I'm gonna follow. I just do little doodles of how I basically want it to look. So if you think that my doodles look a little bit wonky, it's just markings. I'm not doing any real pattern, basically. And it's just because I feel like if you do too much drawing in, it becomes easily generic because it's like you're following a pattern and trying to make it look good. And the truth is that sometimes when you see old guitars that have some damage, the pattern, it isn't good looking. I'm just trying to make out some small marks where I think Maybe some damage could have been. Just going over it and I'm just trying to find some places. Something like that. Always do less than you think. Like for example up here it's very easy to want to remove like this much 
and make a really big, crazy, all the finish is gone sort of thing and getting down to the wood and then coloring the wood gray because it looks really cool. But just removing a tiny bit like this is probably gonna be good enough. And it's gonna be more believable. We don't have to always make a guitar look like it's from the 40s or 60s or something weird like that. We can sometimes make it look like it's just 10 years older than it actually is. And now I'm gonna just take a knife and I'm gonna start removing some of this. And I'm gonna start off with this one right here and just scrape away some of the finish. And as you can see, it's kind of easy to remove, but that's Partially because I have a much thinner finish than what a usual polyester guitar will have. So something like that, and now we can just move on to the next one. And if you remember when I built the guitar, or if you've seen those videos, you know that the sides have a grain primer underneath, so we'll get these sort of uh, in-between things. And a good thing could also be to just scrape uh, some of the clear coat and not just removing and try to not focus too much on the shape and how it turns out. I know that might sound weird to say, but the thing is, if you focus too much on making the actual shape of the relicing look good, you might actually end up with something that looks more weird than it is supposed to. And as you can see, I'm, hopefully at least you can see that this gray spots that are appear, that is just the lacquer being scuffed basically by being pulled away. I do more than the actual where I get down to wood. And it's just because most likely you have a bigger area that you've dug into and then you have just a place. So just remove a tiny bit. And I'm gonna continue now and do the rest and we'll get back to the next stage. Here is a little bit of a close up of what it looks like right now. I've relicked the body, but we're gonna focus on the next step. Only up here, for now. So I have some 800 grit wet and dry sandpaper, and I'm just gonna go over this area and sand it back. And I like to start out with 800 or 600, depending on how rough things look, and just go back and forth and then move up all the way up to 1200 which is what i think is a nice place to stop with the sanding okay so as you can see it looks a little bit dull now after sanding it and so i'm just going to put down some buffing compound something like that and smear it out a little bit and leave it on for a tiny amount maybe i don't know let's say um that i leave it on for a minute or something now if you've seen any of my build videos and stuff like that, you see me putting a sponge in a drill and buffing the guitar that way. But that's not what we're going to do now. What we're going to do now is we're going to fold up a piece of tissue and make a little rag that we can buff this by hand with. Because if we buff it by hand, it will be closer resembling what actual wear with your hand is, or rather with your arm, because it's basically buffing with your skin. Now you can obviously do this with your skin and just go with your arm like this, but I don't really like doing that because you get that gunk all over your hands. Um, so I have a piece of tissue here that I've folded up. Now this is not real like tissue paper. This is actually made of a weird compound. I think it's clay based or something. It's for polishing your car. So by a special kind of tissue polishing paper, I suppose it's what you call it, that you get where you buy your car parts. So let's just start and just put a lot of elbow grease into it. You can't see it really, but I'm leaning into this a lot. And I'm basically just <clears throat> go over this a couple of seconds like this. And then you fold it so that the compound is on the inside and you clean it off. Something like that looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we're gonna focus a little bit more around this area here. This is where the pick has hit the body and created some scratches and dings and eventually it's gone so deep that it's gotten into the wood. And today I'm gonna to show you a new way that I didn't do on the other guitar, but we're gonna splice this in with the old technique that I used on the Strat. So here I have a wire wheel in my drill and I'm slowly and gently just gonna push this in right here. And as you can see, I'm not going very quickly and I'm not pushing it down very hard. I'm basically just, well, somewhat playing the guitar actually. I'm just going like this. And I'm gonna continue doing this for a little bit until it looks like the finish and the playing area is 
a little bit more marred up. Right now, for example, this looks pretty nice, but I want to go a little bit more because I feel like this is not enough scratches to warrant this sort of wear. So you just have to try to match up how much have you removed with how much scratches are you putting in. And I feel like you have to have a lot of scratches for finish to actually start peeling away. So I'm just gonna push this in a little bit more. Okay, so something like that. I feel like that looks pretty good. Maybe I need to put a little bit more there. So I think I'm gonna do that. This is 400 grit sandpaper and I'm just pulling it along with the scratches. And you should match these scratches up on the other side as well, making sure you have some on the pick card. Because remember, we're not talking about playing a guitar for five seconds, we're talking about playing a guitar for so many years that it really has damaged it. Now we're gonna go back to the old kind of way I would do this to just show you what that was. And I do really like that way of doing it. Okay, so here is my heat gun and I'm gonna put it away from the strings and the electronics and I'm gonna heat up this area. And then I'm gonna press in, not slice, not cut, press in a knife like this. And I'm gonna try to do it a lot of times, basically because that's what it's about. You have to make, believably, a lot of marks. And I warmed it up a little bit too much. That does not look good. That's definitely not a very nice looking relic there, but sometimes you make mistakes, but we're gonna try to see if we can make that look a little bit better in a second. But first, here is some lacquer. This is stain lacquer, and I've talked about it in a lot of other videos, especially in my videos about relicking. And that's what we're gonna use to make this look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna smear some of this around here. And we're not gonna be too gentle, we're just basically blobbing it on. And it's gonna make most of these lines disappear in the camera, I think. As you can see here, I'm letting it sort of seep into all the little crevices, basically just smearing it on and not being too gentle or careful with it. Something like that. Here is some of that tissue paper again, and I'm just gonna smear it around a little bit more, trying to make it blend into the area and into the wood, because I have to make this area look a little bit more grimy, I think. It has been played, and it has to looking like it has been played too. Something like that. And now we're just gonna leave that to cool down and dry, and we'll get back to it. If you get burns like this, you can always repaint that area. I'm probably not gonna do that, because I could make up some story about cigarette burn or something like that but yeah you're not supposed to have it look exactly like that we could always try to see what happens if we if we lift these little burns up this is why you have to be really careful when you're working with poly because it's very easy to burn it and even someone who has done this before will make these mistakes oh so yeah but i'm gonna leave that to dry for a bit and i'll tell you what i do about it later because i'm gonna focus on other things for example Right over here, we have some dings and scratches, and I'm gonna try to make them look a little bit more subtle by using some of this lacquer to just smear around and darken them up, make them look a little bit more grimy. And at first, I'm just gonna take this uh, lacquer that is a very yellow goldish brown, and I'm just gonna smear it around these areas where I can see some white marks. If you don't know what I mean about my white marks, you just need to ding up your guitar a little bit and you will see them. But they disappear pretty easily with some of this lacquer tint. And I'm gonna put on another lacquer tint real soon. So just hold on. Okay, so I've gone around everywhere that I did some scratches and dings and I've just put on a little bit of this yellow golden brown lacquer stain that I have here. And now just because usually you have some grime around the pick guards and pickups and things like that, I'm just gonna smear some around the area here. These things will thicken up and basically become clogging off the area. So I feel like putting some around here will help with the effect that there is some grime around this guitar. It's optional, but it does help yellowing things. So I'm putting some on the screws. I don't know if you can see the difference in the screw right here from putting a couple of drops on it. This guitar has three screws holding down the pickguard and just putting a little bit on them and yellowing them helps a lot to sell the effect. And as you can see on my fingers, try to not get it all over yourself. You can put some inside the screws as well. So yeah, and maybe a little bit on the pick pickup. This is a little bit more grimy. Okay, so everything hasn't really dried yet, but it's starting to get there. And as you can see right down here, I smeared a little bit of that golden yellow brown color and now i'm just going to smear a little bit around as well of a darker brown 
to just sort of create some depth. And I just let some of the yellow be on some places and I left a little bit of the dark brown be on other places. And I put it on fairly unevenly and messy, trying to darken up some places really much and other places just a little bit to make it, I don't know, visually interesting maybe could be a word you could use for this. And I'm just gonna go over all the little cracks on the sides. And once I've done this, we're finally gonna take a look at the arm uh, rest. Okay, so now, we're gonna work a little bit on this, and if you've seen the other video about the Stratocaster, you know that I didn't do anything with this here, and I got some comments saying that I should put some vinegar that I've been lying in steel wool on this, and it would grain it up. And I know about that. I think everyone sort of knows about it. But the thing is, it is a chemical reaction that happens between the vinegar and the wood. It has to actually touch the wood. And if you have a guitar like the Stratocaster, then you don't actually have bare wood. You have the primer or grain filler or whatever it is called that is underneath finish. So putting vinegar on it will not do anything. You have to get down to bare wood. And I wouldn't recommend trying to get down on, to bare wood on a guitar like that. Because it is actually pretty far under the sealer. There is like half a mil or something of material in between. But what you can do, and this is actually what I think you should, is you can take some rusty nails and you can put it in vinegar. It goes a lot faster than leaving steel wood wool because steel wool has to start rusting before it works for you. But if you take rusty nails, it will go really fast. And then you can put it into a tiny little bottle like this. I've shown you this before. And then you can just save it and use it as a starter. So whenever you feel like you're starting to run out, you can just put in more vinegar. So here, because we do actually have a bare wood. We can do that. We can put on some vinegar, just blob it on like this and let it sink into the wood. And I don't know how many times I will do this, but we'll start off with one layer and we'll come back to it once it dried and start to have an effect. And we'll see what we should do often. So see you in, I don't know, half an hour or something. Okay, so it's been left to dry now for about two hours and you can see it's really sunken in and it's really gotten gray. So, because, I don't know, it looks kind of flat to me and I don't really like it. So I'm going to put a bit of oil on, and just work it back and forth, clean off the excess. Failed miserably at that. Something like that, I think. Now we can leave this to dry. And it looks pretty good, I think. Perfect, maybe. It's a little bit too dark, I feel like. And I'm gonna go through all of the body again and just put on little dabs here and there, trying to get it looking a little bit even and well spaced out. And I think I'm gonna do just like I did over here, which went over with a brush and put down a little bit of that lacquer stain. I'm probably gonna do a little bit over here as well. And just finesse everything a little bit, looking at it, putting down a little bit of color, coming back to it, maybe put down a little bit more. And then we'll move on to the next step. So see you in a bit. Okay, so I've gone through the entire body and I have basically just put on color in different places and I've tried to make it look more gunked up and a little bit more worn. And if you remember from earlier in the video, I did get some burn here when I tried to warm up the lacquer because I like to warm up the lacquer and then press in a knife or something similar to create the lines. And when I did it this time, um, because this finish is so thin, I burned it really quickly and I wasn't paying attention uh, about how fast it would actually go. And uh, you know, making mistakes is a part of learning and hopefully I won't do that mistake again. But anyway, so what I did was I relic this a little bit more and I just basically just peeled up the lacquer a little bit and I just kind of broke it up with a knife. I went in like this and just broke it up where the bubbles were, not all of them. I also went back with a wire wheel and sort of messed it up by moving it around in all directions and I think this it doesn't look wrong but it feel like it's a little bit too much what I then did was I went in with the the lacquer stain and I sort of put in dots and blended it out in all directions so there is a bunch of different discoloration in all directions and everywhere that makes it look more like it's been stained in, in a weird way which is something that would happen I also took some of the the liquid here for making the wood gray and blended in some here so hopefully as it dries a little bit more it will become a little bit more grayish up right here 
in this area right here and up along and it's just a part of the whole thing to try to gunk things up and make it look a little bit messy so i'm pretty happy with the front i'm gonna relic the back real quick and then we're gonna take a look at the back of the neck because i don't think you need to see this process twice for the front and the back you just need the back but i'll i'll talk a little bit of my thought process after i've done it so here is the front of the guitar it looks okay i think and here is the back of the guitar it has some buckle rash in the middle there and some light dings and scratches to make it all look good and now we are going to take care of the back of the neck okay so the first thing we have to do is we have to roll over the the edges of the fretboard because it looks kind of weird that the guitar is all beaten up and then the edges aren't rolled over and depending on what kind of guitar it is i would roll over the amount differently some guitar has a radius it has a very small radius like for example seven and a quarter i roll them off more than i do something that has a radius of like 10 or something and i think this guitar has a radius of 16 if i remember correctly but something like that and so i round them over a little bit less and if you have a guitar that has binding you have to do it even less because you can get a really weird shape on the binding if you roll it off too much that doesn't look very good so i would try to avoid that i like to use a blade and just scrape it back and forth like this and then when i'm all done i'm gonna put some oil on the fretboard and fix it up a little bit and make it even nicer because right now you can see the new wood being in a lighter color than the old wood okay so the next step here is going to be to take some chords and pay attention to how the hand looks so if i take a regular g chord like this my hand isn't really touching anywhere else than up here so i'm going to mark that off here is where i'm basically touching and a little bit down here as well so my g chord is basically up there and down there and then i'll take something like a c chord and i can see that my hand is touching in a lot of places something like that to here and so i can connect these lines up here the g chord here something like that and then i'll take maybe a g chord basically the same as c and the e is a b is a little bit more up here something like that and i'm starting to get a connection here as well and i'm just gonna go through a couple of chords that i play a lot of some basic chords but even so some maybe a little bit more difficult chords as well and just try to figure out like what is a believable idea of chords that i might have taken over a long period of time because that's basically what it is it's just a question of what have you done a lot of and just try to figure out a pattern that looks something something interesting i'll be back real soon okay so here is the pattern that i've come up with and it might look kind of crazy and it would if the point was to remove all of it but the idea is not to remove all this finish and make a weird crazy pattern the idea is to just thin it out a little bit and make it seem like that is the area where my hand has sort of just pushed off some of the finish for example if we take this area here we can just take a knife and we can just start scraping right there and as you can see pretty quickly i can get into the wood you don't need to do much more than that it doesn't have to be all the way and down here i actually already had somewhere so i'm just going to continue on it and i'm it might look like i'm taking off a lot but that's because it looks like there is more happening than what is really happening you see i'm starting to get down to the wood i'm getting down to the gray primer and then go up here and we'll just start and i'm not forcing the blade or pressing it in or anything like that i'm just letting it naturally scrape the areas and i'm trying to keep an eye on where where my marks were but i'm not trying to like go so far in that everything is totally removed i'm just helping it along basically and it looks like a mess i know but you can sort of see how i'm basically just sort of lightly scraping in the areas i marked but i'm not 
going all the way down. I'm not trying to remove that much of the finish, even though it might look like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just thinning it out there. And I'm taking off a little bit more in the middle, maybe, because that might be where my hand has moved more. Something like that. I know it looks really messy now. And I know I failed to film that really good, but it's because I'm one person doing all that work. But yeah, just moving the knife like this. Making sure I only move where I drew lines and made my marks so that it doesn't look too crazy. And now we're gonna do something that I think is really important and I think a lot of people, when they relic, misunderstand about the neck. And that is that they don't sand the entire neck. Because the thing is, a very few times have you a person who has played only a couple of chords over their entire life. There, I mean, there might be some people, but it just feels sort of strange to me that there would be someone out there who's never tried. I can understand if it's not something you do live or something that you're not comfortable doing, you know, on stage, but I mean, you, you're touching everywhere all the time. And so you have to sort of relic everything. It's just a question of where did you touch more times? Where did you touch so many times that it started to wear in a lot? So, I'm just gonna sand the neck now, just like I did with other places. I'm just gonna sand it and I'm gonna go from 800 up to 12. So see you in a bit. Okay, so I have some marks here from the relicking I've just done. And I'm just gonna put some of this vinegar mix all over where I see some wood. And in some places it's gonna pick it up and in some places it's not. And in some places it's really gonna pick it up and in some places it's just gonna be a tiny faint amount of it. And so, see what happens basically. And I'm not gonna bother too much with it, I'm not gonna focus on it. But I am gonna go over it first once, like I am right now. And then a second time maybe, if I feel like it could use it to make it a little bit more visible that there is some grayness to it. And I'm gonna take a look at it and see how, how it's reacting because it might lift the grain and make the neck feel really weird and strange. And obviously I don't want that because I do want the guitar to be playable. There's no sense in play having a guitar like this if it's not playable, or at least that's how it is to me. I understand that there are some people who want a guitar that they can hang on the wall, but I'm, I'm not really that kind of a person. I want my guitars beaten up because I am the kind of person who has beaten up guitars and I like the feeling of a worn-in guitar. So once I've, everything's dried and I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna feel it and maybe sand it again. So yeah, it's sort of a back and forth thing, this part right here. You have to feel the neck and just see if it's responding and reacting to what you're doing to it correctly and keep at it. Okay, so it's dried here almost, and you can see in the middle here it's not as gray as up here, and down here it's also not as gray. And I think it looks I think it looks rather cool, but the problem is that it does stick out. So I need to sand this back more, which is gonna change the pattern a little bit, but I need to just knock down the grain that has popped. So I'll be back soon when I've sanded it and I've re stained it and sanded it back and restained it a couple of times until everything feels nice and even. So yes. So the neck is a little bit wet right now because I've sanded it a bunch and I've put some of this on it to just make it a little bit, you know, grey in certain places. And so while we wait for that to dry, we're gonna do one of the most important relics I think that you never hear anyone talk about and that is the top of the head here. All my guitars it doesn't actually even matter how new they are. The first thing that I always do, and I think a lot of people do, is I ding the head against something. I always end up dinging the head of my guitar on something. And so, really, a lot of guitars don't have relic up here. They have to have that. I just, I can't believe that you've had a guitar for 40 years or something like that and you've never hit the head on something. Like, not even once, seriously. So, we're gonna relic it. And we're basically, first, we're just gonna work on this edge here and especially on these corners here. So just gonna rough rough this up a little bit and take away and ding it up and mar it and make it sort of uneven little jabs like this. Break up the, the lacquer and just make it seem a little bit like, like there's been some damaged over the years. And some dinging and marring up of the lacquer. 
I don't know about you guys, maybe talk to me in the comments below, because I just feel like this is something that every guitar has. They're always dinged up right there, or at least all my guitars are. I don't think I have a single guitar that I haven't bumped up the headstock against at least something, you know? You hit it against the lampshade or something, you hit it against the ceiling when you hang it on the wall, you hit it against other people, others' guitars, others' instruments when you're playing live, you accidentally bump into someone and you hit them in the face with it, you, you know? In one video I have to tell you about that time I accidentally hit the girl in the face with a guitar. It's kind of funny, but it's also kind of stupid. But that that's for another day. Just thin out the lacquer a little bit around here as well. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just I'm using the knife in a, in a sort of anti way of how you should use a knife. More uneven than maybe than maybe it should be. Go in here maybe between the tuners and give it just some light scuffs or whatever you want to call it. And just take away very little. I did a little bit overboard, maybe here up on the head, but I just, it's just because I know what all my other guitars look like and I feel like it's okay. I don't feel like it's that, that crazy. And on some guitars I would even say like you can actually hit this entire piece off really like, because the, the way the headstock looks, it has like a little curve out thing here, right here, and this entire piece, super easy to have it be broken off. So now I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna work this as well. And I'm not going to do this edge as much because I feel like it's more of a when you turn the guitar around backwards. It's more often that time you hit it into things. You usually you don't see what is behind you. You're more likely to, to hit that than what's in front of you. And you back into things and you hit stuff basically is what I'm trying to say. And that's sort of the thing. You have to think about these things when you're relicking a guitar. You have to like really like okay what... What sort of damage could have happened to the guitar? What sort of situations could you have been in? And if you like never played live or anything like that, it might be hard to think of all those small like little incidents you might have with a guitar where you basically just hit almost anything all the time. It, it might be a little bit hard to see, especially when I'm working and filming at the same time and I don't, I'm not in frame for 90% of the time. And I'm sorry about that, but it's really hard to film. But I'm basically holding the knife and I'm doing little wiggles like this and I'm just basically doing small little diggings on the side here. So just like I'm just wiggling it a little bit and I'm just creating a little jab and I'm not really putting that much pressure on the knife, but I am slowly pressing it in and I'm just wiggling the knife a little bit like that and it breaks off a little bit of the paint and a little bit of the wood creating a, a mess basically something like that i don't know if you can see it just kind of messy and weird and now i'm just gonna do exactly what i did on the rest and take some of the stain lacquer that i have right here and i'm just gonna put a little bit of drops around the areas and on the areas and just make the wood look a little bit grimy and dirty and and ugly and I'll talk to you guys in a couple of seconds. So, the guitar is finally done. And here it is. And I think it looks okay. There are minor details that I feel like I should have maybe done a little bit differently. But I'm pretty happy. I would have wanted, for example, this little area up here to be a little bit more V-shaped and not as round. And I would have liked to have this area have a little bit more wideness to it. That are small details and I also think that you shouldn't get a perfect wear pattern necessarily because if it looks too much like the way you want it and too much like maybe another guitar that already exists, you know, it will start to get into the area of things looking fake. Here is an edge and I'm a particularly fond of the edges actually. The, they are the the little marks and dings that I think are really coming together. Here's the back of the neck which is super smooth and nice to play now and here's the headstock and the front. So I'm gonna try something that I haven't ever done before and hopefully you guys will like this but I'm gonna insert pictures here and now and these pictures are of course of the guitar as you can see. And hopefully you, you like them and hopefully this is a good idea. Let me know in the comments below if photographing the guitar afterwards is a good idea. I'm trying my best with these pictures and making them look 
good and giving you maybe a little bit more details because I sometimes feel like just holding up the guitar in front of the camera at the end and saying hey look at this and then not really showing it in very close detail. I don't know if it's good or bad. Whichever is the best, uh, please let me know. I'm obviously doing these videos for you guys. I don't need the pictures to look at the guitar because I'm holding it in my hands and I can look however close at it I want. But anyway, so that's the end of the video and let me know what you think of the guitar. In the comments below, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It helps me out and it lets me know videos that I do are appreciated. I do a lot of things about teaching how to do different things, but also experiments about how to build things and do crazy stuff. It's not always about relicking guitar or restoring guitars. Sometimes it's about crazy stuff as well. And I want to create a community where we can have a lot of fun and be creative and positive together. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, then please hit the subscribe button. And I'd love to talk to you in the comments below. Give the video a like if you like the video. But anyway, until next time, stay awesome and cool. And go and use these techniques that I've talked about today to relic a guitar. Because even if you maybe aren't that into relicing guitars, you're gonna be really into relicing guitars because it's so much fun. So go and do that because that's the gateway into a crazy side of guitar that is actually really lovely.